this thing spreads like, like wildfire. Now at six, 16 kids are infected with measles in Clark County, and health officials say there could be more cases to come. Rallying for TSA workers, several Oregon unions will be at PDX today, showing support for federal workers as the government shutdown hits day 28. Plus, swept up in an avalanche, rescuers rush to save two men buried beneath the snow at a New Mexico ski resort. I hope we made a difference to help save their lives. We're learning new details about the conditions of those men. And in the water with a giant, we're hearing from the diver who swam alongside this 20-foot great white shark near Hawaii. The 6 o'clock hour of KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. No, no. <laughs> oh, no. that is going to be so interesting to hear from that diver. But before that, <laughs> we want to show you this live view of the Rose City this morning on your Friday. So glad you're with us this morning. You guys all want to do a little happy, happy Friday dance? dance? Anybody want to do it? Ron's <laughs> always good at it. They're so good at it. <laughs> all right. So I was going to say no, and the next thing I knew, I was moving. moving? I was shaking. You can't stop. Uh, Lacey is in for Chris this morning, and we're talking about a Friday light roadways Good. so far. Rod, let's yes. focus in on the weather. Right now, scattered showers. And uh, by the way, if you're just joining us, we've had lightning down around Rockaway Beach, just north of uh, Tillamook uh, this morning also. Uh, our bus stop weather, scattered showers out the door, 46 degrees, kind of breezy from the south. Big story today is a wall of steady rain. Starts around lunchtime, absolutely pouring all over the place when the kids get out of school, 46 degrees at 3 p.m. So make sure they have their full rain gear. Here's Futurecast at 1.30. All the steady rain is going to be coming in and raining for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> More on the weather shortly. Yeah, this afternoon sounds like it could be trouble, but right now it is Friday light, as Drew mentioned. So these drive times out of Clark County, nine minutes on I-5 southbound from Main Street to the Fremont Bridge. 205 southbound looks good as well, and no delays on SR-14 westbound. Highway 26 inbound, under 15 minutes from Hillsboro On I-84, we're seeing some minor brake tapping as you approach Lloyd Center, but you can see that's only ticked up your drive time by about a minute. 205 southbound over the Abernathy Bridge looks good. Ashley Lacey, thank you. It is 601. The measles outbreak in Clark County just got bigger. 16 kids are now sick with the virus. The majority of them never got a vaccination. So as you listen to the story this morning, we want you to weigh in our viewer voice poll. The question this morning is this. Should all students be required to get vaccines? Christine Pitawanich has been following the situation for us. Christine, we're also hearing about new places where people may have been exposed to the virus. Good morning, Drew, Ashley, and yes, the measles virus is potentially deadly, very contagious as well. So here, pay attention. There are a couple places we want to put on your radar. These two schools are new to the list of places where people may have been exposed. There are Tooks Valley Primary School and Tooks Valley Middle School on January 8th. There's also a pair of medical centers that we want to tell you about. Rose Urgent Care and Family Practice on January 14th and Legacy Salmon Creek Medical Center, specifically in the emergency department on the night of January 14th through the morning of the 15th. We have a full list of the places possibly affected on KGW.com. You'll want to check it out though because it's really extensive. It includes places like PDX and other major retail outlets like IKEA even. The public health director in Clark County says people really need to keep up on all this information, especially because that virus can be deadly. Death rate of one to three people per thousand is high. And when you think about 400 to 500 people dying every year, that's as if we had two, you know, like jumbo plane crashes every year in the United States. And so that's why Dr. Alan Melnick, who you just heard from, says people really need to get vaccinated. When we looked into vaccination rates for our area, here's what we found. The Department of Health says in Clark County, 76.5% of kindergartners received all their immunizations in the 2017-2018 school year. In Cowlitz County, that number was about 90%, and Skamania, nearly 87%. But one county over in Cl Clickitat County, the kindergartner there, the percentage receiving all immunizations was just about 66.5%. But you know, if you're looking at just the measles vaccine alone in those counties, there is a higher percentage as compared to getting all the vaccines. So at least that's a little good news. So if you do get the vaccine for the measles, how effective is it? 
The doctor we spoke with says that if you get the two shots required for that vaccine, 97% effective against mm. the measles. So the whole time you've been bringing this report to us, we have had the, uh, the results yeah. so far, the early results of our viewer voice poll this morning. We'll ask the question again, should vaccinations be required for all students? Again, you can see right now the overwhelming majority of our viewers saying yes to this question, but you can still chime in. Go to KGW.com vote or check out the KGW News app and click on the Vote Now tab. Okay, it is 6.04. We want to get to some breaking news right now in Hillsboro. Police say that a man broke into a Taco Bell after hours and stabbed an employee. This is a live picture of the restaurant. It's on Southwest Oak Street and Amco Avenue. Police say the restaurant was closed at the time it happened. The drive through though, was open. The guy somehow got through a locked door and then stabbed an employee in the wrist. Officers say there were some other employees there. They barricaded themselves in an office to get away. When officers got there, they found that man in the freezer. They say he had stabbed himself. He is now in custody and in the hospital. We're told the employee who got stabbed should be okay, but we will bring you any updates we get throughout the morning. Well, it is day 28 of the government shutdown, and today TSA workers are holding a rally at PDX. It'll happen at noon outside the terminal. TSA officers and other federal employees have gone almost a month now without any paycheck. Before the rally, the Oregon Labor Council and the Portland Police Bureau's Sunshine Division will be handing out food boxes to federal workers who need help. We know a lot of you are looking for ways to help out those TSA agents. Travelers of PDX, we know, have offered things like cash or food or gift cards. But is that actually allowed? KGW investigator Kristen Severance verifies that for us. The rules are pretty specific about this. Now, federal workers cannot accept any gifts of any kind except non-cash items under $20. However, TSA agents cannot accept any gifts at the airport. According to federal ethics laws, doing so could distract or create an appearance of favoritism. Our source for this story is Thomas Kelly, a spokesperson with the TSA Office of Public Affairs. Kelly said the public's good intentions, though, are not going unnoticed. He said they are grateful for the public support and it really does make a difference. So agents cannot accept donations unless they're being distributed to all federal employees. This is why a donation bin that was placed at the Seattle Tacoma International Airport is allowed because those donations will be distributed among all federal employees at the airport. But again, we can verify when it comes to TSA agents only, they cannot accept any gifts, cash or gift cards. Back to you. That's a good example of our verified story. So if you have a question that you want answered that you would like to see turn into a story on our news, send that idea to verify at KGW.com. It's 6.07, time for more news headlines in your morning rush. I guess you could say it's a political tit for tat between the president and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. He postponed her trip to visit U.S. troops overseas just hours before she was set to leave. He says it's because of the government shutdown and once it's over, Pelosi can reschedule. You'll remember, though, just a day ago, it was Speaker Pelosi telling the president to postpone his State of the Union address because of the shutdown. In Washington, D.C., expect thousands to attend today's March for Life rally. The group is calling on lawmakers to end abortion. The crowd will march from the National Mall to the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court. Also today, a former Chicago police officer will learn his fate for shooting and killing an unarmed black teenager. Jason Van Dyke was convicted of second degree murder. He could be sentenced to probation or he could get the max sentence of 96 years in prison. He was found guilty of shooting and killing Laquan McDonald back in October of 2014. And Britain's Prince Philip had quite the scare yesterday when he was in a car crash. The Queen's husband wasn't hurt, but police say two women in the other car had some minor injuries. They were treated at the hospital. By the way, Prince Philip is 97 years old. And that's your Morning Rush. 608 is the time before we get to Rod's weather forecast. We want to go to New Mexico where at least two people are critically injured after an avalanche. This happened yesterday at a ski resort there in New Mexico. Rescuers rushed to the scene to look for the victims. Two men in their early 30s were found. They were unresponsive though, so rescuers performed CPR. 
They did establish a pulse and both men were taken to the hospital. One man who jumped into action described the scene that he saw. I was actually there uh, digging along some of my ski patrol buddies and uh, it, was, it was pretty emotional, sad. I cried after like a baby, I don't know. So both of those men that rescuers found are in critical condition. There's no other word right now whether there were other victims caught in that avalanche.